Can you just tell uh, Ms. Tell Curry? Tally, yeah. 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 So test that. I'll test it. Yeah, you you you're all set there, Ms. Kerr, and have a fantastic final meeting. Thank you. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, today is Tuesday, May seventh, and this is the uh, Citrus Select Board meeting. Um, may I? I'd like to make a motion to uh, call the meeting to order and to accept the agenda. So moved. Moved by Karen Connolly. Second by Andrew Goodrich. All in favor? Aye. Uh, before I read a statement, uh. Karen Canfield, she's running a little bit late, so she will be here momentarily. Um, but before I move on, I would like to read our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is that the Citrus Select Board is committed to providing an environment of respect. During meetings, we ask all members to interact in a polite manner, even if there is disagreement. We value the participation of our community and want all participants, including marginalized and minoritized uh, communities to feel welcomed and respected. We ask our committee members and all who participate to commit to these standards to support and respect our community. Um, so do we have any walk-ins this evening? Walk-ins are folks that are here to bring up issues that are not on the agenda. That's right. right. Okay, is that is that you? That's us. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, come on forward to just your name and what is it sit here? Uh, sure, you can. It's fine. Um, thank you. So um, my name is Joanne Wycroft. I live at 154 Turner. This is my colleague, um, Della Shepard, who lives at 70 um, Citroen Ave. And we are here um, as we represent a group in the Sand Hills neighborhood called the Citroen Salt Marsh Stewardship Initiative. It's two years old now. And it is, um, is the object of it is to clean up and restore the Sand Hills Salt Marsh. Um, so we realize that, that other departments handle property problems, but there is a, a, a projected development at 164 Turner, which is on the edge of the marsh, that we are very much opposed to, as is our neighborhood. And we would like to give you tonight a packet of 500 signatures from um, both the neighborhood and the environment, the situate in general, um, opposed to this, development in a salt marsh plus our covering memo um, because you are our elected officials and we want you just to be, we realize you don't, well, we would like you to rule on such things like protecting salt marshes, but um, we want you to be aware of this. Oh, I appreciate that. I did not, I was not aware typically um, that Hopefully you're going in front of the planning board. As yes, well. well, we've been, and, uh, we and our lawyer have been in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals. We have another hearing on May 16th, okay. and then there will be a concert. So we're, we're well aware of the process. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, so we'd love to, we made six copies for everybody if we can get them out. Um, Absolutely. You don't have to read them. Right. We can spend the light to this. Oh, I'm sorry, later. later. You don't get us a later agenda. Yeah. Give them to you. Give them to you. Yeah. Um, we think the range will get them to us. And they can give them to you electronically too, if that is helpful. Sure. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, No, that's all right. I uh I just wanted to say we, we hope to get on a on a future agenda so we can discuss it after everybody's had a chance to read it. And we will write. Because there's this isn't the only problem at this salt marsh or in this neighborhood. We'd like to we like to talk about all the issues facing the marsh that are killing the marsh and see if there's some way that we can uh, solve some of the problems, starting with you guys. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, noted. So, and the board will love that as yeah. nice my last meeting, so we'll be putting I know. I know. Uh, I know. So, so you can. So your swan song, you it'll, no, it'll it'll be be on record, and we'll uh, make sure that we can do it for that. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Thank you. Thank you. Are, there, are there any other walk-ins? Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Next yeah. on the agenda, uh, I don't know quite how this works. I don't either. Because. <laughs> The item on our agenda that's next is the recognition of Maura Carter's last select board. And I, I feel as though Maura's feeling like this is the longer tie because we've set aside other town meetings, but 
Excuse me, ladies. Thank you. Okay, so I have tried to read this at now two meetings. This is the third. <laughs> And I'm going to get it done tonight. Don't rip it up. I'm not ripping it up. <laughs> and I know that my fellow board members join me in all the sentiments that I'm about to express. And I know that the town people do as well. Maura Curran has served on the City of Select Board with distinction, energy, and intelligence for 10 years. During her tenure, the town has made significant investments in infrastructure, including a new public safety complex, a new senior center, a renovated public library and a new middle school. In addition, the town is undertaking critical improvements to its aging water system, including replacement of many miles of water pipes and a new water treatment plant that will come online in 2026. As important, while making all of these investments, the town's financial performance has earned it an A plus plus, double A plus bond rating from standard reports. These are important achievements because of their size and scope. And Maura deserves a great deal of credit for her perseverance in seeing them through. However, quality of life has also been among Maura's highest priorities, and she has been a forceful advocate for those things that we as a town value so highly. As a member of the Affordable Housing Trust, she supported the public private partnership that resulted in the construction of Moss and Green a 30-unit affordable housing development, and the creation of a small grant repair program to help those in need of assistance in maintaining their homes. Maura has also recognized the importance of addressing the problems of substance abuse through the FACTS program and the need to create a social service position for the town. And in 2020, she initiated and continues to provide counsel to the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. No one is more proud of the history and beauty of Situate than Maura. Whenever the opportunity arose to protect, preserve, and enhance our shared spaces and assets, Maura was ready. Just a few highlights include a $2 million investment in the iconic Situate Lighthouse, the creation of a new public park at Pier 44, the purchase of hundreds of acres of open space, and the $10 million reconstruction of high school athletic fields. Major improvements to Situate Harbor also took place while she was on the select board with her full support. Prior to joining the select board, Maura was a member of the advisory board and a member of the school committee. In all, Maura has served our town in an official capacity for nearly 20 years. That was dedication. <laughs> Above all, Maura is a shining example of what it means to be a citizen and public servant in our democracy today. She shows compassion for all and a willingness to, to and respect her fellow committee members, the hardworking employees of Town Hall, and her constituents, the people of Sitchin. Thank you, Maura, for a job truly well done. If we are very, very lucky, more people will follow in your footsteps. Has been a long goodbye. We're not done. We're not done. Oh, I'm not There's no There's more. We're going to have some whereas. Uh -oh. um, so we have a resolution from the town of Sidgwick. Um, whereas we are gathered here this evening to recognize and honor years of dedicated service to the town of Sidgwick by Morris C. Current. Whereas Ms. Curran first became a select board member in 2014, serving on the board with distinction for 10 years. She was elected to the board with John Danahy, Sean Harris, Martin O'Toole, and Anthony Bignan. Ms. Curran served as chair of the board in 2017 and 2003. In addition, Ms. Curran was elected to the school committee and served three years from 2005 to 2008. Advisory board for six years from 2008 to 2014 in service to our neighbors and community. Ms. Curran was and is a champion for residents and employees throughout her tenure, demonstrating care and compassion. Whereas the town of Situate has been seen great change during the past 10 years, too numerous to mention all of them. 
While on the board, Ms. Curran supported significant investments in infrastructure, including the new public safety complex, senior center, middle school, and renovated public library. She further collaborated to successfully open the Lawson Green Senior Affordable Housing Project, bringing the town significant improvements to the Situate Lighthouse and critical water system enhancements that will include new treatment plant. Ms. Curran initiated and led the establishment of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee for the Town of Situate in 2020. Whereas while on the select board, Ms. Curran also served as a member of the Affordable Housing Trust Committee, chaired the Town Administrator Search Committee in 2017, and served as a select board liaison at various periods to the Advisory Committee, Affordable Housing Trust, Beautification Commission, Te uh, Cable Television Advisory Committee, Capital Planning Committee, Coastal Advisory Commission, Conservation Commission, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee, Housing Authority, Plymouth County Advisory Board, Public Building Commission, School Building Committee, Situate Chamber of Commerce, South Shore Coalition, Street Acceptance Committee, Traffic Rules and Regulations, Veterans Services Advisory Council, Water Resources Commission, and the Zoning Board of Appeals. Therefore, if you resolve that Morrissey Current accept this resolution with the resounding thanks and appreciation of the select board and the entire town of Citroën, your long tenure as a volunteer of public service for almost 20 years has benefited our community in countless ways for many years to come. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm asking a long goodbye. So on behalf of the town, we're going to spend all the paper which you can tell us how the phone call. Um, but I actually I spent most of the only one first cut that joke. Um, I spent part of the afternoon reaching out to some of our groups to get a taste of what they thought serving like and it's amazing. It's the same way that we experienced serving with you, which is uh, not only the breadth of service, but how many different boards you put on, how hardworking, but also how positive. After 20 years, you still are, which is hard. It's so much work, um, and how much everyone has enjoyed working. With you. So it's great. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Well, I, I just do want to take an opportunity to thank um, some people that I have not had the opportunity to thank. Um, it's a very bittersweet moment for me, I think. Um, first and foremost, I do want to publicly thank my husband and my two daughters who um, I started this venture at when they were seven and eight years old. Um, and, and you parents of young children know that, and, and you as well. Um, it's an exact sacrifice that your families uh, Put forth to allow you to pursue your, not that it's a, it was a dream, but uh, <laughs> your commitment, you know, my commitment to public service. Um, and I want to thank all the residents that supported me throughout the years. A lot of neighbors, a lot of close friends uh, who were always there as an ear, uh, uh, someone who listened, someone who would listen to me so I could ask them questions, and make sure I was staying, um, you know, on the right path of, of where folks had. The things that folks have elected me to do. Um, so they kind of, I have a whole list on that one. But, and I have my long list here, and I want to start with the town employees. I think um, our residents underestimate the dedication and the expertise and the professionalism that this building and the buildings around town, whether it's the libraries, the senior center, our public safety, our school teachers as well, include them in that. But they come in every day um, and put their best forward and really have our residents' interests first, um, as well as protecting, um, you know, being mindful of the taxpayers and, and what they're doing. And I want to say thank you to all the town employees that, that work in Situate. Um, it's been an honor to work alongside you all and to support them um, in their initiatives. And I think this board and the boards that I've worked on really have always tried to listen to the employees and really um, support them in, in their observations and how to continue to move the situation forward. Um, you know, Jim, I want to thank you 
um, for taking the job. No, no, right there. I, you know, thank you for taking the job. I think um, it's been a great partnership and really enjoyed working with you. Um, and I think you put together a great team at Town Hall and, um, you know, it's been an honor to uh, work with one of the best, best of the state. And I think that's what folks need to realize is that. Jim is, you know, very well respected uh, throughout the state in his role, and uh, we are fortunate to have him um, at the helm here. Um, so thank you. Thank you. And want to thank Lorraine, uh, who um, I don't know if everybody knows, but she's also retiring on uh, the next in the next couple of weeks. Um, mm -hmm. So we started the same year, uh, both ten years, and Lorraine has done a fabulous job managing our office. So. She, she manages the select board office and has, and she's done a incredible job. I never hear a resident complain. They just always compliment the amount of service and the extent that the ring always has, has taken to um, help them. And I thank you for making us look good in times <laughs> when you might not otherwise have. My pleasure. So, <laughs> thank you. I know, we'll <laughs> that. And, and Michelle and Jen and and of course, Nancy, and I don't want to name everybody, but um, so I don't want to leave anybody else out, but certainly that's the core team that keeps everybody moving. Kevin, EPW, thank you, you're always here as well. Um, and like I said, I don't want to leave anyone out, but it's, it's a great program. We're fortunate to have, to have all of you. Um, and then just Seth, thank you for all the time that you give. I don't think folks realize that you were probably a good 18 hours a day uh, managing all the different meetings that everybody takes part in. So just want to appreciate, I appreciate all the support that you give to the board and all the committees throughout town, throughout the town. And I do want to just say um, one thing being in this role, talk a little bit about this morning when I spoke to the men's breakfast group at the senior center, um, which is, I was, it was actually a very good, very nice time. Um, you know, you learn um, over the years that you have adversaries, but I've learned from my adversaries just as much as I've learned from those that, um, you know, think that we have common, common goals. And I think that's what's been, uh, what I will take home um, is that it is important to listen to both sides and to always, um, you know, I always felt that I hopefully made the right decision. Um, it was, you know, sure made mistakes. I know I did a couple of them, but they are, they are ones that I can't live with. <laughs> but um, it's, um, it's I, I learned from every select board member that I sat next to. And I want to thank the four of you uh, for your professionalism. And I'm always amazed at if I learn something new every meeting from one or more of you um, with your insight, your curiosity. And, and I thank you for all the support that you've given me. And it's been my honor to and sit next to all of you, as well as John and Chloe, and Mark and Sean, and Sean, and Mark. <laughs> so, so thank you, it's been my honor. And I'll miss it, I'll miss, I'll miss you guys. That's true. That's that. Um, so thank you. So before we go to the next, um, Agenda item. I do want to. I thought we'd just take a minute to talk about Sociembri. Do you mind uh, taking a second to do that? I, I hate putting such great events at the end of the liaisons because everybody is tuned out um, by the end of the meeting. Um, so, Karen Campbell and I just came back from um, a Sister City trip, Sociembri. Uh, they hosted the 2024 Mock Olympic Games for our students. Uh, there were 14. Uh, 14 and 15 year olds that traveled over there. Uh, uh, shout out to uh, Patricia Jacquard and Anne Marie Jean and Jim Shaughnessy, who were the chaperones and really uh, spearheaded the whole trip. Um, it was amazing, and I'll let Karen speak as well. Um, I came home really uh, valuing our sister city partnerships more than I think I did, um, and really recognized the value of. Uh, maintaining those partnerships. Um, it's, it's, it was interesting how important it is to them and we were treated with um uh, what was that? I was say I was 
Um, they, they, they treated us so well. Um, and guess what? Our team won. We took home the gold. <laughs> we took the gold. So congratulations to them. Um, we did say that we would like to bring them before the board, but probably in June at some point, uh, once they get their jet lag um, <laughs> through them, and they've got you know year-end exams and graduation, but we did say that we do. There's a picture of them right there winning the gold. And um, they had their medals um, placed upon their around their necks by an Olympic gold medalist from Susie Aubrey, um, who was the Olympic gold medalist from you know, Judo. Yeah, Judo. So uh, hopefully they, they were honored by that as well. I just have some of the pictures. But I'll have Karen. Uh, it was a great, it was a great week. Yeah, it was an extraordinary opportunity for not just the students, but for the, our community because the students, because of that saying, it, was, it really was not life experience. Uh, they got to meet kids from Italy, Germany, and France. We all stayed with families, so we got to really be, you know, get a taste of what it was like to be resident there. And, um, you know, every opportunity they, they it, it was extraordinary. We were, we were treated like, you know, royalty. It was amazing. For the grown-ups, it was an opportunity to really get to know folks to do our job around the world and learn from them and understand the challenges they face that are, you know, pretty universal and that is running in this pathway. So it was pretty amazing. And um, I know it was a success because on the last day, one of the students was like, can we get some more sister cities? These guys are cool. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a very good exchange. And I think one of the most poignant moments was after um, after the award ceremony, which by the way, the entire town filled the stadium. It was it was not just you know a small event. They had bands and they had dancing and they had a flash mob and we'll have lots of video um, sets, of course. We'll put them um, on our on our sites. But um, at the end of it, the kids had become in such a short amount of time so um, connected. They all shipped, uh, uh, they switched their sweatshirts. So all the USA sweatshirts are now in Germany, and our kids are walking around with German sweatshirts from the team that they they uh, participated with. So it was it was amazing, and um, as always, Ms. Vern, as our board chair and, and lead member of the delegation to do it, uh, represented our town very well in all of the, the public speeches and things that we had to do. So yes, it was a great trip. Um, I hope this meeting is short because it's pretty. Pretty sure my face is going to be on computers. I know. Yeah. Yeah. And you did as well. We, yeah. did. we tagged yeah. him with all that stuff. So it was great. So I urge you guys to have an opportunity to take part in that in the next couple of years, whether it's with Ireland or Cape Verde, that you, you take it. Take yeah. them up on it. It's very good. With that, we will move to the first item um, on our agenda, which is a discussion for um, and vote for a donation from the Golf Association. Uh, George Goldrick. Hey, George. Good evening. Thank you for coming in. I'm very impressed. All the committees and boards you were on, I thought you'd be 80 or 90 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we tag. Still, that's Yeah. Sometimes. Uh, so just to give uh, everybody an overview, uh, the Golf Association um, donated a generous amount, $350,000 to the purchase of Ford Street um, in 2021, which is that lot of land over, as we all know, Ford Street, that beautiful land that we don't have to it. Um, and George is here to speak about an additional donation. Correct. Uh, so my name is George McGoldick. I live at 107 Border Street in Cohasset. I'm here tonight as the president of the Golf Association which is a Citrate and Cohasset-based 501c3, whose mission statement is to preserve the health of the Gulf River. Um, we have done uh, numerous things around uh, town. Uh, Mrs. Blakey was our, <laughs> she was our, our, our troop mother for many years when I first moved here to, uh, to Border Street 13 years ago. Uh, and she really instilled in us um, the fact that we're trying to keep the river as healthy and clean as possible. So when the Border Street parcel became available, we had looked at the entire parcel, and of course, we didn't have the funds to acquire it, but we were able to find an individual who bought the majority of the west side of the border street and just put one house up and is preserving. And then actually one of our board members bought five acres on the west side to preserve it. 
perpetuity as well. So we were able to keep the majority of the west side uh, as it is today, as best you can see it. On the east side, there was a proposal to build, I think, six houses, and the town had the right of first refusal. So uh, the Gulf River took the lead in trying to raise the funds to do it. And we had over 350 individuals give anywhere from a dollar to $50,000 to try to preserve the, the field. And getting the money was one thing, but uh, the town meeting, uh, I was sitting up in the obviously non resident section, and I, I actually felt like George Bailey. <laughs> and it's a wonderful life when people just kept streaming in. During a moment, there was a noise that evening, and people just kept coming in the doors. And set over 700 situated residents voted to buy this piece of property. And it just, it was a wonderful, wonderful thing to happen. And to this day, I think everyone appreciates it as they drive by the fact that, that the town was able to preserve it. Um, subsequent to that uh, meeting and the vote and the contribution of the money, we actually got additional funds in from individuals, not only from situated grass, but from actually all over New England. To further whatever we can do. So tonight we have a check of $15,000. And we want to pledge to the town of Situate in order to build a parking area so that people can more appreciate uh, the land that the town has been on and acquired. Uh, we, uh, we've talked with the Conservation Commission, uh, I guess, who has the lead on this in terms of determining where it is. So we're hoping that this will jumpstart that to enable the town. To go ahead and build the parking area. We, um, we know that there's individuals that are out there that are willing to give time, labor, and materials towards it. We don't know what the cost is yet because it hasn't been signed now, but we're hoping that this starts the conversation to get this done. So, uh, again, I have, a, I have a check here. The only stipulation that our board has asked is that there's a time frame for it. So, it's not just a general donation to the county situated, it's a donation. Specifically to build a parking area for the horseshoe field. So, whether that's an escrow agreement or whatever council wants to come up with, we're more than happy to find it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Eric, do you want to add anything for your new proposals? Or... Yeah, just to, to just, uh, clarify where things stand. So, the uh, Conservation Commission is going to have as a, um, uh, as a, as a conservation property. They have been working on different potential sites. Um, the original, um, Ms. Blakey had uh, identified an area that his family had used as a, a, a driveway parking area. Um, Kong Kong looked at that, they looked at a couple other sites. And in September of 23, I believe it was, um, I met out at the property with Kong Kong and our conservation agent at the time, Ms. Goldberg. And, um, they had narrowed down a location that they thought was appropriate uh, for all those reasons. And um, where it stood was we needed to just find the time and energy to get the actual design so we could fit it out. Uh, and so I, uh, uh, that still isn't there for us right now. Okay. It is to fit out the design and to finalize the, the work out to design the design so that they can have it uh, priced out. Okay. And we finalized that. Can I, can I ask, is that a, a so whose decision? Which board is that a con con? Is that a planning board? Is that a board selectman? They'll recommend to the select board, yeah. They, who the recommend? Con, I'm sorry, con con will recommend will where recommend should go with it. And we will approve the contract okay. for, you know, the final. The proposal. The proposal. probably have to put it out to bid, and then we can sort of. Right, depending on yeah. how, it, how it shakes down. At that time, the the, the anticipated, unless it's changed, which I haven't heard as the anticipated location we discussed was this donation and in addition, um, the Castello family had um, volunteered uh, or to donate some material, or the equipment in their time. Uh, the chair of Kong Kong felt that it was sufficient to, uh, to complete the construction. Okay. Uh, Aaron, uh, uh, oh, me as one well. Sec, one sec. <laughs> one sec. Well, yeah, I don't know what, yeah. but yeah. I, I've offered to donate time and equipment as well. Oh, I appreciate that. You, since you, you give me one second. Um, <laughs> name and address, sir. 
<laughs> I'm sorry? Your name and address? Michael Blakey, 135 Border Street. Thank you. I've lived on Border Street um, most of my life. Haven't died yet, so I still got some time <laughs> still going. Like you're picking, yep. Yeah. Um, the the uh, George um, had done an amazing job at raising the shortage of funds that needed to purchase my family's property across the street. Um, my parents bought it in 1946, so we have preserved it and protected it um, as long as we put it down. And, and I'm being selfish. I am so happy that the town bought the property across the street, and we don't have another four McMansions on that beautiful straightaway. Um, the Karen knows we've discussed <coughs> a parking area down below the River Club. Um, it was raised to me that there might be a safety issue with people speeding on Border Street. Um, and I have, like I said, I've lived there most of my life, and that straightaway is prone to people putting the pedal to the metal. Um, having a parking area coming off of the straightaway, I think, is a more dangerous proposition than having it down in the hollow um, below the river flow. Um, and the reason why I said, uh, but I'm sorry, I, I should preface this. That was an old farm road going in. And in 1978 or 1980, when we had gotten into Chapter 61A, um, we were doing forest management down there. And that whole area down below is all gravel. And it was filled in um, within regulations of the Farmlands Act um, with the DEP. Um, there's also a drainage pipe there somewhere, but I'm sure it's plugged up by now because um, that was over 40 years ago. So there is a good base there already. It might have to be trimmed up. <clears throat> but if you come from Situate going towards Gohassa past the River Club, you slow down around that corner and down the hill. And if you're coming from Cohasset or Situate, you slow down on that, on going down that hill into the hollow. So the question was raised as to whether that was the safest position to go. Now the corners are have a lot of underbrush, honeysuckle, and everything. Um, the town with their batwing mower a couple of years ago took a lot of that out of the way. So there's a nice visual coming from Situate going to Coasa. And that could be cut back even more. And I think with very little work, the, the old farm road in there could be enhanced. Um, and the, the area is, because um, I was on Concom years ago, is, um, is, is uh, subject is seasonally subject to being cut lands because there's a brook that does run down through there. Uh, and with it would also be a place where um, somebody could go in and park and go off towards the Hubble Trail or go off into the into the um, or the old Lakey property and circle around and come back down to the parking area in both situations. So it seems like it's a better entry point for both of those areas. And um, other than that, if anybody has any questions, I think you know the safety factor is better on that section of Border Street. I also would like to speak for the Omaras who are out of town, who bought my mother's house and contributed a big donation to the purchase of the property and to um, Carl Christensen, who I spoke to yesterday. Um, he is out of town as well. <clears throat> and Carl's comment was, I thought what we were trying to do 
was to preserve that whole straight section of Border Street as best as possible. And he didn't happen to agree with a, an entrance in a parking area um, on the other side of the street. And he, he basically has kept the farm the way my family and I would have liked to have kept it. Right. I think, uh, well, thank you for all that insight commentary which guys ask questions um that's important information that you know i think should be shared with the conservation board um as well as our traffic rules and our police chief will definitely take a look and have um, a say as to what their opinion is with regards to entry and, and, and exits to make sure it is safely developed so um having your history and your knowledge i think would be you know really beneficial and we'll get to that point so that the proper location for it is, you know, is identified. I don't know if what the already identified is, is the same place that Mr. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was talking about. So we don't have to take that up tonight. Um, but certainly, you know, take your your observations into consideration. Uh, Karen, I'm I'm happy I'm happy to be available for any discussions. Karen, Karen knows. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think the way to, to say again what Mark said, those are questions that will need to be addressed in other venues. Um, so appreciate the input and certainly, you know, I'm sure that all the other committees that would have to be involved would be involved. I would like to say that $15,000 is a generous donation. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be enough to do design and engineering. So I'd like to ask the Gulf River Association if you would be willing to fund the design and engineering piece because that kicks off the entire process. And until we get that done, we can't go out to bid, we can't go anywhere else. So if it's more than 15,000, if you could help fund that, I think that would be terrific. Um, I also will say to you, the Gulf River Association demonstrated big time how powerful you can be in raising funds. And I would really ask you that when time comes to build or the parking access, wherever it is, that you would turn on that machine that you turned on so ably last time to help the town. Because the town has already spent $2 million, which is much more than we've ever spent on a property. I write you it's a somewhat unique property, but Mordecai Lincoln was also a unique property on the Gulf River. Um, and so I would ask you uh, if, if you could help us to raise the money to actually build parking wherever it is. Uh, so to answer the question, yes, we absolutely will support. Um, obviously, we can't pledge a number that we don't know about. Uh, right. We are just uh, anxious to get something going. Right. And so we're hoping that this kick starts everything. Uh, and if we could set out a schedule, plan, and it sounds like it's always conservation and it's with this board at the same time. Um, I don't know if, if we can, how we can, how can we get on their agenda? How can we get them to pay attention? We met with them last September, and now we're here in May, and, and you know, what's happening. So, um, I think everyone is on the same page in terms of wanting to get this done. So, we're, I can pledge you that the Gulf Association will do whatever we can to help get this done. I think this is a, a good start. And um, yeah, I think the Conservation Commission wants to move ahead. I think they did not have the funds to do design and engineering. Yes. So now we've come up with that. And that is, as we all know, or I didn't used to know this, I know now, that until you have those done and until you've figured out all the other issues that you're talking about, you don't know what it's going to cost. And then you don't even know you're in the business development. You don't know until you get to the point where you're going to put up the documents, what the um, what's happening in the economy at that point. So, but to, to do this, to get this done, and to not have the Conservation Commission have to run around to find extra money somewhere that they actually don't have. I just think if the Gulf of Association could take on that piece right now and, and help them do it. And the town administrator has something to say about when things get scheduled because it may or may not involve teaching jumping you. So, and we do have a lot of other projects going on in town. So, it, it really is, I think, up to the Conservation Commission to work with the town administrator to figure out where this is fit into the schedule. 
but until the uh, engineering design is done and this location is selected, we're all stuck in the same place. How long is it? Uh, how much would you anticipate design and engineering to our parking lot? It's I mean, it didn't cost more than a couple thousand dollars on the building last year. Yes. That's pretty good. It's going to sound more like it's not engineering. <laughs> what was it, Yes. Um, Mordecai was 100,000 for design and engineering. Wow. I don't think this would be more than that. Um, not just I, I don't okay. think this would be more than 10 or 15. It should be that much. Okay. okay. As long as they know where they're going to go. Okay, big start. My other question for you, and I'll let, let Andrew know if Susie asks some questions. I'll get to you. Just, just one second. Um, um, timing. So, uh, Mr. Goldberg expressed putting some sort of timing restriction on this just to get it moving so it's not sitting there for another three years. And I, I understand, obviously, this is almost three years. Um, Jim, do we think 12 months is, I, I think, municipal, as you know, um, processes for... six months is way too short. Honestly, um, I'm just trying to figure out an appropriate time frame because we're being asked to, to do that. I mean, if I could use this money to do the design and engineering, um, <coughs> you should be looking for construction money next time meeting next year. Okay. I don't know if you have design the time you get on for a fall town meeting. Right. But definitely. But we could potentially. Okay. Fall town meeting was which one? Yeah. And also, again, about other opportunities like three days before. At least, yeah. yeah. Uh, again, I, I appreciate your point. Um, this is not like we're kind of working where there's a whole parcel we're trying to figure out whether it's hiking trails and bias. This is a, a gravel park. Yes. This is a very simple and similar to what we already have in some of our other. Exactly. exactly. So it, it's pretty simple. I guess the first issue that Mr. Blakey raised is location. So someone has to figure out the location. And then once you get the location, then of course I mean, it should be more than a few grand. I could probably get one of the engineering firms in town and do it for Mono. Uh, certainly. Uh, so uh, what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to pledge this funds uh, to the town uh, to be used for uh, engineering to partial engineering design. But is there a way, Jim, that we can be part of the uh, discussion? So that I'm not just giving you a blank check, because like I said, we I know a half a dozen engineering firms and right, situation glass that might do this for fun. It's not, it's not a big thing. I prefer blank checks myself. <laughs> so it's not so, so uh, the only one we would do is we would circulate it to a couple of firms because it wouldn't need a full bid if they didn't want to put it out for us. So it would take a couple of firms and not give us well, the yeah. first again, the first thing I have to do is wasn't that How soon do we want it? So I've been I've been in you know, Kaiser for thirty two years. I've been on I've been board this year, but a number, and I know the pace that happens. I know the pace of private sector moves. So that's why I just want to hand it to you and say, see you later. Call me in three years. We we the goal is we'd love to work with you in order to expedite and get it done, not only quickly but also as cheap as possible. Uh, so the combined efforts. Of the association and our friends and our engineers, we would love to help you. And, and uh, someone wants to donate to the, the engineering design, happy to back on. So, again, I, I, I'm more than happy to uh, allow these funds to be used towards it, so long as it's something that is reasonable. Because somebody could say, Here's an engineer, here's a bid, it's $25,000, I can get a bit more to do for yeah, I'm in the business, so I understand how it works. That's why we solicit for more than one guy. So I guess the biggest question right now is the location. Right. We're not, yeah, we're not going to decide. I know we're not going to decide tonight. So yeah. is that a conservation decision or is it a police fire decision? Conservation, plan, DW, 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 traffic rules go through a number of committees. But I think, you know, for the initial location obviously there's something that's already been scoped out by conservation um certainly um you know i think that Thomas needs to be shared and if mr Blake has any additional 
insight or comments, obviously you will be heard, right? I can't promise that they'll agree with you because it'll ultimately be up to, I would imagine, the police chief and safety as well as make sure that the egress is safe. Yeah, you know, yeah, the, the so, workflow is Com Com walks out there, looks at the conversation factors, right? Comes up with what they think is going to be the good choices. Then they propose it, and then the uh, track rules and regs comes up. Says they don't really look at the alternative as much as what there's, you know, here this is what right. we have to do. So, yeah, um, it's usually the way that, and, and they and they have had these conversations without like these. Um, uh, in, in okay. Uh, oh. Andrew. Um, no, I mean, I, again, I, I love, I love hearing the, the, the dream of record hours here that folks can donate. The I wish we, I wish we could all the time. And I guess Jim, this is a question for you know, how do we make sure that we that we don't violate, you know, the wage? And, and, uh, I just, I always get nervous. I, I always want to do it. But I just want to make sure that we're any work done on any work done on top property has to be done by minimum wage. <laughs> Whether we're paying for it or someone else is costing the work to be done. Even if it's donated. Mm -hmm. so, I think the work is in kind of condition. It's uh, still supposed to be it be for minimum wage. Right and now this somebody the donator has to pay for minimum wage to work it. The person who's doing the work has to be for minimum wage. That's what now there's different things around it. If you're in sole ownership and you probably don't pay yourself for minimum wage, blah blah blah. But still, if you're doing work on public property, you need, need to be for required good laws and instructions. So that's why it tends to try on the side. There's no prevailing wage on engineering. So we can get an engineer. As I said, once once they give us an idea what they want to do, we can go solicit several engineers. You can give us a couple, we'll solicit, we'll send it out, ask for a response mm -hmm. back. What's going to cost the design and the engineering go? First, I need a place. So, and so, and so, and so. Andrew has a question. Okay, for Nancy, I'm trying to remember on the, uh, he added gravel or redid some of our other conservation um, parking lots in the West End. I mean, what were some of those? Gosh, I think it was the last one we just we did was at uh, Appleton. Yeah, they came back for more money for the base um, lane and all of those. And then they ended up turning back some of it. So they did the picnic areas and um, um, the drainage and the gravel parking lots. And what, what was that total of cross? One of them was $107,000. The other one was like $95,000. <clears throat> It's around 100,000 per crop. <coughs> Susan, anything? Yeah, yeah, I do have a question. First of all, thank you. Susan Harrison, 12 Boulder Street. And we'll, uh, <laughs> I will say that. Um, and we're in a butter of the Hubble property on the other side. So we were very happy that the film purchased this. And thank you for all of your effort, as well as thank you for fully funding the design and engineering. My concern is that, like, putting a specific time on this, um, I don't, and I, I guess we need to word it appropriately, but there's just a lot of committees. We've talked about traffic, um, con -com procurement, more procurement, DPW, um, traffic um, rules. So I just want to make sure that so we don't say a year and we miss the year and then your check has to go pump in. I don't know what happens with your check, but like I want to make sure that the town's not in on a hook for for the funds. Because this stuff takes time and our time we have a lot of stuff in the works. Um we a lot of a lot of folks spend kind of the whole weekend and Mordecai Lincoln cleaning up. So we've, we've got a lot of great properties, but I also want to make sure we're managing expectations. So that's my like, and I don't want the town to be on the hook because we missed the deadline because what we thought was a perfect parking spot needs to be modified to another place and it's going to take. Yeah, so and I, so I want to make sure that we're. I don't think any of us would accept a gift with so many restrictions, okay. right? Because no, I would. Be, that would be my concern. No, I think that this I fail to say thank you. And I'm just more <laughs> than we'll get there. Some, yeah. Uh, for all, and again, this is the start of the conversation. This is, as you can see, there's so 
we've dealt with some of these other ones, and the complexities are, um, I'll say, asinine sometimes. Sometimes they are um, how complicated uh, some of these projects are. So um, I get frustrated over some of them as well. Um, but I get into the work and starting this conversation. So I, you know, equally so grateful for your donation and your work on behalf of this. I completely hear what you're saying. And I think, you know, to Susan's point and others as well, um, we certainly can make a motion to make best efforts to move as quickly as possible. Um, I, I don't think anybody would um, make a motion to be contingent upon a specific time and then it turns back to you. I don't, it, that's tough, right? Because that's, but I think you hear, I believe that this board and our town administrator, and we always work in good faith, in the best faith. So understanding, you know, this donation is, uh, you do want to wrap around and get it moving. I mean, like you already said, this starts the conversation, it starts the design, it gets it moving. So uh, we appreciate that. So if you would be so obliged to allow us to accept your donation, uh, you know, with our best efforts to move as forward as quickly as possible so it doesn't sit for another three years. Um, I think you're hearing that the board would be so inclined to do that. Um, I would personally prefer if this went back to Hotline and we have a discussion with them and that they, like a lot of our other boards, when they have a donation, the chair of the board comes to the select board with with uh, the person whose mm -hmm. group is making the donation and we accept it on behalf of the town. But I think just to we try to follow process, like process, right here, not left process. And I just feel as though they deserve the right to recommend to us that we accept the donation and under what circumstances. And I'm hoping they're going to be listening to our concerns mm -hmm. and what we have to say. So um just, I, I feel strongly that uh, I do appreciate the donation. I just feel like we just need to go along, do it the way we should do it. That's just so to, to that end, Karen. Uh, <clears throat> why don't we do this? You have my word that the Gulf River Association has a fifteen thousand dollars pledge to the town to build the parking lot, whether it's used for designing or parking lot, and at the appropriate time. We will come back to you and handle them and reach out to you. Seems reasonable to me. My word is better than any piece of paper you've ever had. So, um, and not to be a dead horse, but no. we do have a really great organization, and I know there are a lot of people with a great deal of interest in that general part of town. It's so beautiful. So, anything you can do to help create the cost through your work. Your group would be, I know, greatly appreciated by the citizens of the town. So thank you. So I think so, the best way to end this, oh, sorry, well, sure. I think the best way to end this is to say that the Gulf River Association is here tonight pledging that we have a minimum of $15,000 towards the design and construction of the parking lot. When the town is ready to move, the town is ready to move forward with the project, so we would present the check to the town. Sounds like it answers a lot of the questions. Yeah, about I mean, I don't, it, in my opinion, I mean, that's fine. I mean, in my opinion, I would take the donation. I, I think you, you hear everybody talking about our concerns in getting to that point and putting in motion a specific date. But I I don't agree with you that it has to go through Conham to come here. I mean, we accept a lot of uh, checks directly to us, whether it's from the Library Foundation or, or from folks that come to us from the Police Department or whatnot directly to us. Um, I don't know what the rest of the board feels. I mean, it's up to you guys. See, I personally think that most donations <coughs> come um, through Police Chief of Homesphere when there's a donation to the Police Department and he recommends that. Right, but they they worked with us directly with the three hundred fifty thousand dollars. They didn't have to prove on how they they donated. That was it. So anyway, different. Right, well, this fish. A different. What what does the rest of the board feel on this? 
Awesome. I feel like, to be honest, I feel like we don't have our act together on exactly everything, exactly where the stage is. Like, I, I don't have the proper information. Um, and I, this is a good kick in the butt to say, hey, let's focus on this problem. Let's have the resolution. We'll find. And I can talk to John Connell about this. Um, so we're having a conversation, and you're we're kicking it into high gear so we can actually solve the problem. That's just where my mind is, just so you know. So you want to wait? I don't, I'm, I'm agnostic. I'm, I'm fine with waiting. But um, I, I just want to, I want, I want the project done. <laughs> like, like, I trust your word, and, but I also, I'm not trying to offend you, but I, I just, I wanted to get it going. Um, you know, if we could tie it just to the parking lot or something, I don't know. Uh, I just want to get going. So, so again, I, so the town is not committed to spend any money. Let's put it that way. The town is not committed to spend any money. The town is only going to use resources at Con Con and DPW as far as see where the location is. Sure. That's all the time. Is. Once that's decided, then the town needs to spend money on design and engineering. We are here for it. I have a minimum of $15,000 to, to start that up. Okay. Okay. Um, so we will do that. Uh, Jim, uh, oh, do we have a new conservation agent, right? New conservation agent. Uh, we just made an offer on hiring the new conservation agent administrative person, so we should sign shortly. Get them going, but I'll talk to Frank tomorrow. Okay. Can I conservation agent? It was um, Jen. Jen. Yeah. Sorry, Jen. Jen Smith, who was the assistant. Okay. Okay. Uh, one last thing, Mr. Blakely. Yeah. One last thing. Um, for future consideration, <coughs> Merrill Engineering did a, a comprehensive. Topo and survey and wetlands delineation of that whole side of the prop, that whole 18 acre parcel. And I have all of those documents if the town doesn't want to have And I'm, I'm happy to share them with you to save in any of the engineering costs. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Right. Somebody, whoever the town chooses to engineer the parking area, can, can take that. And then I have one question for Mr. Boudreau. What, um, if I'm a sole proprietor and I have excavating and forestry equipment um, and I'm donating my time to the town, I, I'm, I'm not paying anybody except yes, myself. Yes, you, you don't have to pay yourself for prevailing wage. You have to pay anybody who works for you for prevailing wage. Right. But as the owner or proprietor, you don't have to pay yourself for prevailing wage. I won't. I, I will speak to Leo Costello in the same in the same fashion, uh, who's a sole proprietor, and uh, actually he's probably incorporated. I can't speak to. I know Leo and I have talked about donating equipment time to the town to construct a parking area. I cannot speak for Leo as far as providing materials for the surface of the parking area. But we have both we have both uh, agreed that we were going. To provide the town with uh, equipment time. Thank you, Pat. Yeah. You know, thank you both for your generosity and, and your associated with generosity as well. I understand it's an initiative that you are all very passionate about. Um, as Karen said, you know, the town has kicked in quite a bit of money to taxpayers have already, so we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And I guess we'll just leave it at that. Do you have anything else, Karen, that you want to add? No, other than my echo the Commitment that the golf association has, has stood by us for all of us, and that and the, you know, our missions are aligned. So, I appreciate all of the, the association's work and your maintenance of the properties. <laughs> right. Okay, thanks very Thank much. Thank you very appreciate much for coming in. Okay. okay, thanks. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. See you soon. Okay, um, next on the agenda, um, Kathy Garner cannot be here this evening. Uh, 
that we know she has injury to her ankle. Um, so she identified that in uh, 2025, our election day, um, based on our charter, our rules, the town meeting was going to fall on the Memorial Day weekend. Um, so thank you to Kathy for saying that now. Um, so when that happens, it is up to the uh, board, the select board, to approve the change the date of the election. It's an interview. Um, so she is requesting um, to change the annual town meet, wow. annual town election. This is right. meeting. Is this right. an election? Yeah, election. Yeah, this is meeting. So annual town election from May twenty fourth uh, to May thirty first, twenty twenty five, which um, is the weekend after um, Memorial Day. Right? Yes. Okay. So, um, somebody wants, there's a motion here. Is there, is there any motion? We move that the May 24th, 2025 annual town election day be changed to Saturday, May 31st, 2025. Motion by Karen Canfield, second by Andrew Goodrich. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Kathy, for doing that. Next on the agenda, we've got Drew Shield for uh, a request for an emergency sewer connection. Um, Drew, how are you? Very good. Thank you so much for having me here tonight. It's always a pleasure to come to this body. <laughs> well, we appreciate that. Kevin, I'm sorry, get No, you get through. Yes, clarify. The, all the paperwork says vinyl avenue. I think you mean hand vinyl. No, 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 no vinyl. it's vinyl. It's vinyl. Wait a minute. Is vinyl that vinyl avenue is in the heart? Right. And vinyl is near Adderley, Adderley, which is near Lantern Lane. Correct. No, no, no. no. Lantern Lane is right off of. It's a paper street off of the vinyl. Oh. Was it Yeah. Yep. And I was looking at the other time. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. We'll see. Mr. Yeah. Tell you about that. So we received a letter from Rosano Davis, which I forwarded to you, telling us that the Title V septic system up at 72 Vinyl Ave is in failure. Whenever we have a system in failure, if it has the ability to tie into town sewer, Title V says that if it can be done, then it's supposed to be done. So I was informed that they can tie in via using Lantern Lane at the very end, and it would be coming through the back of the property, all one ownership. It's not going through anybody else's property. It's just coming right down. I had, or the owner of the property had Morse Engineering do the design for the hookup. I forwarded those over. I'm not sure. It came in the big paper, so I'm not sure. Well, yeah, yeah, she scanned so, it to us. She did. She did. And that is basically it. So if they you guys deem that they have the ability to do it. And Will, uh, Brandon, and Kevin are aligned with this design. Yeah, the final. Right. Uh, and the design is not spaghetti, right? It's a major regular line. Regular line. Regular line. Regular line. Okay, perfect. And does it open it up to any additional revenue on Lantern Lane? Is that what it? If those no. folks or those seven lantern lane already connected. It, it might be one other house at the end of Lantern Lane, but otherwise most of Lantern Lane already has so they do. Okay. It's just stop short. So I'm not sure if the last house is sort or not. So that house might be able to get sixteen lantern lane Uh yeah, all the way to the back on the right. Back in the right, yeah. So that, that oh, house might be able to hook up, but that's it. Okay. Uh all right. Um uh, questions from the board? So a paper street has sewers. I don't know. There's a paper street. Yeah. That's what some people just said. I did. Oh, 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 I could have spoken. I know it's a side street. It's, it's a dead end side. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
here. Yep, you ask the student question. Okay. Right. Do I have anything Motion. else you want to add? No. Right. Motion. Move to approve the emergency sewer connection for parcel uh, uh, ID number 50 11 6 0 72 Mile Lab. Then a connection agreement with the DPW. Motion by Andrew Goodrich. Second. Okay. Second by Susan Harrison. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is that all true? That was it. Thank you so much. Karen, I'm sorry you couldn't take the job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you are looking for the board chairperson, so I offered her the chairperson. opportunity person. to be the chair of the board of health. <laughs> 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 Maybe not. Maybe not. Right. Okay. Thank you. 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 All right, so we have some contracts for some <laughs> truck purchases that I see. We have we lots, do. Of, lots of backup on these three trucks. Pages up there. Um, so, do you want to start with the public ground division? Sure. So, what this is, this is replacing an older dump truck that we have. Um, in the last town meeting, we were allocated $82,000. Um, we've sourced an F550 dump body um, from Hillsboro up in New Hampshire, and they're giving us New Hampshire state bid price. Um, we will be adding a plow to it and potentially a sander, and we'll, we'll max that out and get that truck all ready for next, you know, next season. So it's and is the plow and the sander included in the It's not included 000? in that. We will purchase that. We can buy the plow from a cheaper source um, locally, and uh, we'll save a little bit of money that way. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying 88,000 miles. Thinking eight, what, what did we approve, Nancy, for 82? 82. 82. Okay, so we won't exceed that with the plow and the plow. No, and if we, you know, I had already talked to Nancy about that. We do have, if we can't use the existing sander that we have in the old truck, we would we would look to get the new one for our arsenal budget. Yeah, so. Okay, questions? Just a question. No. Motion? Move that the select board award the contract to purchase a new 2024 Ford F550 regular, regular cab, red cab truck, the dump body from Hillsboro CDRJ, the amount of $73,488. Second. Motion by Karen Connolly, second by Susan Harrison. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next, we have uh, the this tractor. We have a new tractor, yep. and these are used. Um, we use them all the time. We use them for brush clearing and road clearing, and it, the big use for them is sidewalk plots. So this will be our second one. We've got another one two years ago. Yep. And uh, what we were able to do is, I met with the mechanics. Uh, we had two hundred two thousand uh, dollars voted at town meeting. Um, we got the price to 184561. We're going to reuse um, a plow and we're going to reuse our uh, snowball because they're still in pretty good shape. So um, we'd rather get the use out of them and save a little bit more. All right, so this will give us two full working. Two full working. You just have one right now, or do you have two and we're just replacing? We have. We have two, we're going to be replacing the other one. We've got an older one, and it's a combination between we got one from Dolwell when they get rid of theirs. It would be in that for the past five or seven years. So we'll get rid of those because they're our nature. Questions? No? Yeah. We have a lot of backup here, so thank you for all that. Uh, all prepared properly. So, motion. Chadwick one. This is the Chadwick. Yeah. Move that the select board award the contract to purchase a new older C70 from Chadwick Barrows in uh, $108,976. Motion by Andrew Goodrich. Second. Second by Susan Harrison. All in favor? Aye. Uh, All right. And then we have water department and utility trucks. Yes. So um, <coughs> we have priced out two utility trucks. We had an allocation of seventy-four and eighty-nine thousand dollars from the last time meeting. Uh, 
we priced a couple out. We looked at multiple dealerships. We got the best deal. Um, through the New Hampshire State bid list, we are purchasing two trucks for $66,400 each. They'll be replacing all the utility bodies uh, that we have and get those in place soon. They'll be ordered and uh, mm -hmm. we'll go from there. Since just this town meeting, is you, you don't have to wait till after July. <laughs> it was time for available funds for retainer to retain free cash. Okay, so we're all set there. Um, questions? No. And with the remaining funds, we will be purchasing clouds, but we'll source those locally because we can get them cheaper. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Motion? Move that the for the written contract to purchase a new folder C70 for Chad Barrows tanks. Oh, no, we just did oh, that one. I'm sorry. It's an excellent Correct. Okay. Page 31. Oh, you're right. Move that the select board for the contract to purchase, purchase two new 2024 RAM 3500 utility body trucks for Hillsboro Barrows CDRJ in the amount of 66400 each. Totaling $132,800. Motion by Karen Connolly. Second, Andrew Goodrich. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, new trucks, which is good. All right. Okay, so next we have a discussion for a new Hawker Federal license request from XR Foods, uh, doing business as Crossroads Sandwiches. Ben? Yes. Yeah. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm great. It's always fun to, um, I was thinking about this today, you know, just seeing the expansion of food trucks in town. Yes. Um, which is great. Um, just the more variety we can bring, but I don't want to kill your thunder. Tell us a little bit about uh, your request and what we're going to do. Awesome. Well, thanks for letting me be here and inviting me uh, to talk about this. So, I don't know if everybody here is familiar with the brick and mortar we have at the new uh, gas station, but. Um, I think it's been received really well by the town. And what we'd like to do uh, is expand a little bit more and use the food trailer to get to different areas. We've had requests for it as well, for a lot of the, you know, like untold is looking for additional pop-ups. Uh, we've been west by the city of Little League to come by, and I think they filed for their own permits and so forth. So there's a, there are multiple people in town who asked us to do it. Um, and it seems like a great idea to, you know, capture a little bit more because the winters are lean around here. Lean? Lean. Oh, lean. Very, very lean. And so it's lean. Lean. Especially this winter. I was going to say, it's been bleak with a lot of rain, so it's been nice to the sun. But, um, you know, so with that said, it's, it's important to try to make the hay and the sun shine as much as we can in the summer. So that's what we're really trying to do is, is have additional arms so we can, you know, get our product out there. People seem to really like it. And uh, also, Right. Yeah. The only, the only, um, you know, Marie, you had written um, down some of the backup here. I think you did anyway. Mm -hmm. um, with some of the um, the commentary is being able to um, coordinate it with the dean, right, in different areas. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how this will work. Do you foresee that being? I've a spoken to They've already done. Yeah, so so okay. Katie and I have spoken at length, and we worked out something that's perfectly right. manageable to both of us. Right. What is it? Uh, yeah. So essentially, she's been going to Peggy and Lighthouse on specific days, and I, I had to look it up when she wrote me, but I think it was Thursday, Friday at the Lighthouse, Saturday, Sunday at Peggy, and she said, as long as you know, I don't want to interfere with those days, she perfectly fine with it, and we, you know, uh, committed to each other, kind of. Stay in contact, and if I yeah, if I'm not going to be there one day because we have a private event, hey, you go use it. Uh, but she's perfectly amenable. I think we had a great conversation. You know, I, I don't think it would be any problem at all to work with her. And she feels great. So we'll work that out. Okay. Andrew, you long as we're <laughs> uh, it'll be approved. Well, the room will be top of the trailer. I know. That's what I say. <laughs> the, uh, no, I think everything you have there is fabulous. Very easy to It's long, totally games for hours. So. <laughs> <laughs> the double headers. And yes. if I'm correct, also in this backup, the little league has to approve that, Lorraine, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. So the Little League has their new permit delivered me the permit number to do this. So okay. Um, you know, assuming I don't want to assume anything. This goes forward. If you approve this, then we will have all the permits to do it all. Excuse me. Eric, I'll just ask Lorraine. Do you foresee? I know we're not going to be here. Do you foresee somehow or other having to coordinate where trucks go if we start to get inundated with? I think this is going to be a topic for discussion at our Harbor Heather policy discussion, okay. hopefully at the next meeting. Okay. Um, because it says that we're going to allow up to six per location or oh, six Harbor Heathers in town. And I think we're, we're, you know, I think the three is manageable. Right. That's enough. I think we should think about how many we really want to. Okay. At the next meeting. We have four ice cream truck vendors, and the policy currently says six Harbor Peddler food trucks. Maybe we want to make that four or something. Right, I'll give that is. Okay. But I think for this, it's fine. That's why, you know, we're not going to take part in managing where the food no, trucks go. Sure. Yeah. But I think they are really good people and very willing to work together. So we suggested that, you know, Ben call Katie and work out. Because we want everybody to be successful. Do and we can talk about. Uh, do we do um, one day hopper peddler approvals? I think you know the whole. The board of health food, does that. Food trucks. The board of health does that. So hopper peddlers is more of a permanent. Yes. I, think you okay. might be I just I know like with that. events, you know, I would never want to restrict it in four, right? Because right. yeah. Oh no. So you know, for instance, I still have to get a temporary food vendor for Eric. Okay. You know what yeah. I mean? So even if I have this permit, I can still let me. Well, it's because it's cold park mode too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's terrific. I mean, you, I think you're right. It is indeed. I know that you're going to gangbusters down there. We talked about it. So kudos. Thank you for that. Um, my question, and I'm how great is it that all three of our food trucks are local, that our, our situate business, I think mean, that's wonderful. Um, I, none of, neither, the, the other two do not have in their licenses the ability to go to the fields, right? They have not asked. They have not asked. And I, uh, it, it, of course, anytime you're doing something new, I want to stop and think about, okay, you know, what's what's the rollout of this? Like, if, if they ask, and you know, we can we we're gonna have to think about that. It's, but wouldn't that be up to the little league? Yes. Once once we approve it as a hawker peddler licensee, that's not properly right. It would be up to the little league to open it up to the other two as well. I was explicitly right. invited by the little league. To do yeah. That. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm just thinking policy wise. I, I, I just want to make sure that. Tomorrow we go, oh, we didn't think about that. And I'm I'm just trying to think of what the thinking about would be. Right. I mean, parking's always the issue, which you've addressed with the layouts, which is the most critical one. Um, but no, I have no objection to the idea. I think it's wonderful I think they're, that they've invited you to Steve's. Well, I think they would do the scheduling just like on Cold Brewery does. You know, uncontrolled brewing schedules food trucks a different dates and times and different, you know. Okay. So, and the um, ice cream trucks, can they go by Central Field or any game? Not unless they have permission from the uh, Lily. Okay. All right. That's great. Those, I just wanted to model that a little bit. Yeah. I just have a question. Do you have this nature that we trash receptacle and send it? Thank you. All of that is part of what I even said a picture across. I just don't want, I don't want to see all of a sudden there being mounds of trash by the Trash barrels in these various places filled with food truck stuff. You and me both. I do not want to be in it. What? We don't seem to have a problem with food trash. It's, 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 it's a different kind of trash. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good question. It's a good question, though, especially if they're at the beaches, which those, those receptacles do get overloaded yeah. if they're there. Yeah, no, we're, we're committed to doing it just like we do it at the shop clean, <laughs> tight, efficient. They're required to have it for the water. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Board of Health. And they yeah. have to pass the Board of Health inspection. Take that, of course. Um, there's no 
we removed the, we extended the other licenses year round. Yes. And this one does not specify, so I just want to write for it. Yes, it does. It, it says I it actually does. does. It says 11 request. to 8 p.m. annually. Yep. It's oh, just saying. Okay. Yes. That's in there. That's the word. All right. Anyone else? Questions? No. Yep. You're Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, um, motion. Move that the select board approve the new Hawker Peddler license for XR Foods doing business as Crossroads Sandwiches to sell a variety of pear sandwiches from the trailer at Agony Beach, Egypt Beach, the Lighthouse, and the local situate locally field from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. annually, ending the board of purple. Motion by Karen Canfield, Sorry. second by Andrew Goodrich. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you guys. Appreciate you it very much. Seeing it around. We'll see you out there. Absolutely. Okay. We'll to hopefully this, yeah. this summer. Yeah. Hopefully this summer. Uh, stays. It's just not having rain on the weekends. Just rain on the weekends. Trust fine. me, we're looking at that. Well, thank you again, guys. Have a great night. night. See you at the double letters. All right. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully my team wins the championship again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we have the program for Memorial Day in front of us, um, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, is this from the Veterans Advisory Council? <laughs> no, that is right. from Sarah. <laughs> Sarah has been covering it. Um, she's, yeah, and she's she wants working, Sarah's working with the American Legion, with the Harbor Master, with Steve Litchfield from the Veterans Group. Is she doing an idea everything? She's working with everybody. Ian Mike Green is as well. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for all that. Um, In lieu of a veterans agent. Right. Um, okay. So you have a program that's still trying to fill in the blanks. I checked today, those blanks are still not filled. Ian, Susan Harrison is going to do the hotel in the morning. Andrew's going to be the speaker for the select board. Okay. Okay. You're all welcome yeah. to join the parade. Yeah, um, we always march in the parade. So they're still looking for a keynote speaker? Yes. <laughs> but they're they have it under control. They do? Okay. Yes. No, they need it. They need it. No, they have it under control. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can check today. Okay. And I'm assuming by, well, I'm going to assume that they've told me by our next May 21st meeting that. Oh, all slots to go. Yes. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, you have a question, Karen? No, it just looked like there were two different schedules, but I see what's happening. It's just there's a something more formal, and then there's something that's just like more of the draft outline. That's a program. Yeah. 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 So thank it's you. great. So it's great. It's always a great event. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And I might join this hotel. This is one of my favorite things to do. So I'm going to go to <laughs> have to get a ride on the police boat. How are they going to use some hotels? Uh, they use multiple boats. So yeah. the police go out, the North Master goes out, the Coast Guard usually goes out. It's about four or five days they go out. It's actually, if, if the weather is nice, it's a very nice event. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's, it's not stormy. You, nice. stay, you stay inside a wall um, <laughs> and just make sure you don't. Um, I'll give you some advice. Okay. Yeah. Stay, oh, stay, stay, stay out of the firing the range. <laughs> Out of the way of the fire range, that's all I recommend. <laughs> uh, question? Um, Gloria, have they, do you know if they've invited um, in the past some years we have Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, a different organization of um, mm -hmm. sometimes the little one have marched in the parade, mm -hmm. and, and that hasn't happened in the last couple of years. Do you know yeah, if they're they inviting? Oh, oh, so certainly did. Sorry. It's been less robust than it has been. So, have they been invited? That oh, was wonderful. That's great. Lorraine, did you hear Karen's question? Uh, yeah, I'll check. It's that. always okay. fabulous that the government participates in the Because we don't have a veteran agent coordinating it, have we made sure those invitations have been extended? Right. I'll check with Sarah. <laughs> Thank okay. You. All right. Any other questions for Lorraine? Jim, anyone? No one? I always hate that we leave out softball. Well, Adam. 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 
The more students, yeah, the more, I mean, the more yeah. residents. It's just, not like our parade is too long. So if you yeah. add anybody, it's fun. It's a great job. 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 It's a great so now we are going to turn it over to our favorite topic of the hour for the past couple of meetings. Over to Karen Canfield and Lorraine to talk about um, the balance of our um, revisions to our select board policies. It's not really the balance, but oh, if you don't mind, Karen, I'll take this because I know you've been away. I very much appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Lorraine. Okay. <laughs> okay. So tonight, um, there's only one heavy duty thing out there. But uh, so you have an outline of the topics. There's four bullets to discuss tonight. Uh, one is uh, just really updating Karen and I every week select board meeting packet guidelines. And we want to make it part of the select board policy meeting packet guidelines. And it looks like this. And all we're adding is something that we do anyway, but just to formalize it with a lot of new people coming in, someone coming in new this job, et cetera. And it's to add internal departments are required to provide backup documentation to support their position to the select board. Uh, which is which is what they're doing. This is online and in the Okay. Yeah. So let me get to there. Okay, so you're just basically putting it into the select board policy. Yes, set of general right. Putting it into select board policy, uh, you know, the times that things are due to the office. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes things get delayed, mm -hmm. which requires meeting on Fridays, Saturdays, whatever, this mm -hmm. weekend Sundays, um, to pull it all together. Mm -hmm. um, and I think to Thursday is. is too late, like you know, it has to be no, okay. because they can't even get it in by 9 a.m. Okay, so pushing it up, you don't think it'll help? No, no. Right. I mean, people have business they want to attend to. I understand, I you understand. know, if they have a bid that comes in on Wednesday, they want their contracts to be executed at the next select board. Okay, and I, I know I'm per you know, perfectly fine working under pressure as long as it gets done. Yeah, you know? well, you are, but we always have to establish policies in keeping in mind the future. Right, yeah. Right, and I think that that's sticking to these policies, you know. I mean, I don't think I've ever gone to Jim to say, this can't go in the meeting because I don't have the information yet. But that may happen more in the future. Okay. And he may have to make some decisions as to, it's not in to, you know, carry who took Lorraine's place. So it has to go in the next meeting. And that's included in here. Except just these guidelines require approval of the town ministry. Yeah. Any questions, concerns? Yeah. Okay, so we can talk about I'm sorry, did you have a question? No, no, no. Okay. Thank you. So the next one is a very it became a big lawsuit last year. We've always had guidelines for walk-ins, and we've always had them posted on our website. Um, and they're pretty simplistic. We've always been, the select board has been really championing walk-ins to have it at the beginning of the meetings, where many boards and committees have it at the end in many different towns. And I personally think it's, it's good to have it at the beginning. Um, and there have been some, there was a big court case last year. Um, so legal gave us a complete write-up on public participation at board and committee meetings. Just so folks know that the court case was not with us. No, no. I just want to be clear. <laughs> it was not. It was a Supreme Court case, I believe. It wasn't even in Massachusetts. Um, but many towns refer to it as, or in the government, they refer to it as public speak time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's fine that we need a walk in. So, yeah. public, to as public comment, public speak. 
I think, I think we've always used walk-in. I think walk-in is fine. It means people can walk into the meeting. Um, but we want, Karen and I talked about it, we want to defer it up a bit more, make it available to all boards and committees, not just the select board. Uh, and we will be adding this in the future to the next update on the board and committee handbook. Uh, and we just want to make it consistent with what was recommended by the insurance. The select board does not have the authority to prevent, to prevent all speech that may be upsetting and are offensive of public speech. That's really the crux of it all. But do we have the purview to do that? We know that like our boards and committees, but what about a planning board that's elected? I mean, we don't have a school committee, like we don't have any right to no, but we jurisdict will, what they do. No, but we will send this legal document that was sent by Murphy Hesse to me in the Hague out to them and say, this is what the select board is adopting. adopting. You may want to consider. Okay, I just think we have the power to force it. Well, I think if we tell them this is best practices based on a lot of court cases that have been, yeah. you know, yeah. come, be, come yeah. before uh, various courts recently. Um, and I think that the fact that we limit, you know, certain limits should prevent things from getting out of hand, which I think we've all seen evidence that there are board meetings that do get out of hand, but I think if you strictly, you know, enforce the limits of how long someone can speak and that they can't keep coming back, that, that, yeah. Yeah, that right. there are parameters that seem reasonable to me. Yeah, there are more reasonable parameters uh, around this from our data departments. So we're placing from where it says new down, yes, what was above it? This is the old policy. This two yeah, pages one is the new policy. Hello. Yeah. May I also say that I think this board is particularly good not to pat ourselves in the back, but letting people comment during the meetings because a lot of boards do not allow the public to speak during their regular agenda. You either have to speak before or after. So I think that you know we've got a fairly liberal policy. If something's on our agenda. Almost always saying, does anyone have anything to say? Exactly. So I think that's valuable too. Yeah. So this is really nothing that we haven't been doing all along. It's just tightening it up a little bit regarding the times and how many people are allowed. And I do like giving the guidance to our own committees as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Some of them, you know, <laughs> they need a little bit of guidance. Yeah. That's like that. Like that has yeah. come up several times. Yeah. yeah. I don't struggle when like, things get out of hand. Like, and they aren't aware of what their authority is to go that thing. So this could be yeah, that. so that's good. Um, the only thing I want to bring up is is I don't think it'll ever because well it does happen if there's something big. Number five is about okay, you got five people there, you can talk for five minutes, it's six or more, you get two minutes, no one wants to pick one talk. Um, I just wanted to highlight that as as you know, we have very rarely been on occasion with something that people are very passionate about. Well, they build, yeah. after the last week. Cool. Yeah, right? Right. I would just say that perhaps we might want to say um, at the discretion of the chair yeah. or something, just to give you the wiggle room. But I think that is a good condition. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's already in here. Did we do that? Um, in the, oh, number, number five? Six. No, that's just how they tell them. Oh, they can't just give their time to another speaker. That's, that's all all remarks must be addressed to the chair of the board or committee. Right, but number five seems to limit that if 20 people show up, you're only going to let six people. I mean, this is what our legal department recommends. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, so this refers much more than to just walk ins. Well, I'm only asking because it seems to me as though it's talking about walk-ins is different than talking about participating as you walk a meeting. So it's anybody who speaks at a meeting. All right. So public just, participation at boarding committee. All right. So it excludes walk-ins, is my understanding. Well, if we look on old, it's the guidelines for walk-ins. So that's different. That's what we used to call it. Okay. But, so this refers more to the, than just to walk -ins. It refers to public participation throughout the meeting, yes? 
Am I reading that? Yes. Yeah, that was a question. Correct. Yep. I'm just reading um, number seven. I switched it to walk in slash public speaker. Um, well, but so to Karen's point, are these do these policies apply to those situations where you just brought up, right? That we do extend the opportunity for folks to speak. Or is this you don't have to do that? You do choose to do that. Right, we do choose to do that. So I guess I'm just trying to I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, the question is. Because we have different rules for walk-ins, such as you can only be a walk-in if the item is not on the agenda. Yeah, right. yeah and, but that's not how this was defined. Right. That's, that's her point of my confusion yeah. is that's all. So do we just It just sounds like it's just broader. And I think yeah. as long as the language you know says that it's at the discretion of the chair to manage it, it should be okay. I guess what I'm saying though is walk-ins, I think we need a special rule so that the walk-ins don't take over the meeting. So that we limit walk-ins to more strict guidelines because they're not on the agenda. Well, that's covered I think on in, in number one specifically. Addresses those that just walk in. Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, think, but do we usually ask people to sign up to as a walk in? No. no. No, are we? Basically, I think this addresses both situations and the way I interpret it. So, number one specifically speaks to walk ins or public speak. And then the, the rest of it seems to address. Any public, the media in general. Yeah. But yeah, I, but I, I, I'm I, just saying, number one suggests that you need to sign up to speak. In some cases, that may be true. I mean, when we had a room packed when we were talking about aquaculture, I had sign in sheets that before you entered the room. And it was a It was a walk in period that wasn't on our agenda. So, walk ins, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Walk-ins are those people who have something to say right. about something that is not on the agenda. Correct. And we kind of try to curtail it because otherwise walk-ins could take over the whole meeting. So the rest of it to me, and I'm just asking clarification, are we expecting people to, according to number one, to sign up to no. be a walk-in? No, no, so see number four, then I think we need to take that out of there or change that word. Yes. What word do you want to change? Um, signed up, signed up to speak. Yeah. Who are present to speak. We can say are present to speak. Individuals or group representatives who wish to speak to the board or committee during its public comment meeting shall be known. I'm just going to change to are present to speak. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to sign up to speak as a walk-in. We have never had that. Although on some occasions we have had people to sign in. I completely yeah, yeah, understand yeah. that. When we have a okay, we got it. We got it. Yes. Yeah. We're in agreement. Andy, did you have a comment? No. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that was a good observation. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any other comments on some of the other points in here? I wonder, um, so who wrote this? The Mercury has the to me in the hand, right? Yes. The attorneys. Can I be so uh, nitpicky as to move number four to number two so it flows yes. better and kind of, so you talk about walk ins, the next one is walk ins, what the walk in can address, and then it talks about how they conduct themselves. Because we kind of get down, I think that makes sense. Down. Right. Oh, that's a good option. Yeah. Uh, number number one there. Four big ups to. Oh, I was talking. Yeah. I think that's good. It makes it to the carrots. Do you see um, the ring? Yeah. Okay. I'm moving number four. four, four two, 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 two. Two. And everything is down. Yes. yes. Yeah. Do you want to move number nine to number three then? Same thing. Yes. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Just so it's all tightened up. Yes, it well, does seem nine to applies to everything. I would not move that one. 
Oh, right, it's slash public speech. But it keeps referring to walk in public speech. Right, because well, I, can call call all, I can call it all public speech. I can delete walk in. I added that. I think the disclaimer you should change walk in public speech to public participation is not a matter. I'm sorry, I'm not sure where you are. Number nine or nine. So whatever the is not a time for debate or response because that's the line that's what it's called at the top the title of the call and i also think it clarifies the fact that if a board committee member speaks during that period it's not a, it's, it's not necessarily the reflect of the board's opinion that number nine seems to be at least some of it does not reflect the views of the positions of the board of committee So I'm changing number nine after disclaimer. Instead of walking public speak, I'm changing it to the words public participation. Yeah. Oh, sure. And then four becomes two. And we want to edit in number one. Yeah. I got all that. Cool. Any other observations? Yeah. And I like the new policy. Okay. Okay, so then the next item is um, Cudworth Veterans Cemetery, which is too complicated to go on to the However, I wanted to introduce it to you. Um, it's an existing policy that we have. I did share with the outgoing agent who said, keep it the way it is, uh, which we could certainly do. You have a copy of your backup. The board requested that I send it to the Veterans Advisory Council for review. Mm -hmm. The Veterans Advisory Council, what we got an email this week, I included in the backup asking that the board consider allowing parents. You'll see a letter in here from Bob McLean, who's the chair. And he said the back review the cut more cemetery rules and regs. We had one suggestion to add to eligible family members. As of now, spouses and dependent children are eligible for interment with the veteran. We would like the select board to consider adding next of kin parents to be, to be eligible for interment with the veteran for deceased veterans who had not previously married. So only for single veterans? Yes. Sorry. Yes. So that is a huge change. Do we, um, it's a very, very tight definition of who is buried in the veterans cemeteries. So I got a lot of different answers from a lot of different people that were looking into a lot of different things. <laughs> so I said, okay, I went to the state and federal government to find out what the state and federal rules are. Thank you for doing that. For because Marshfield had no idea because they don't have a veterans cemetery, and many towns do not have a veterans cemetery. The ones that do do not allow parents. It's a space issue. That's right. That's what, yeah. we, see, that's what kind of we have to do an assessment as to what we have for space. In my opinion, and, and Jim and I discussed this this week. We met about this. And Jim and I agree that we sort of need to see where we're at with the veterans cemetery and such a, what kind of space we have. I did put in a request to Mike Green. He had a really busy week. He hasn't had a chance to look at it. I'm going to suggest that we get that additional input and information. Yeah, we don't need to it, We don't. Yeah. No. It's a sensitive subject, so we absolutely should. It's a sensitive subject. It's two different. I'm just going to give you a little bit. So here are the federal. Register rules and regulations. We end the state uh, National Cemetery Administration Director, the state as well. And they do allow parents under certain circumstances 
The state does? Yes. State and federal. They both do. And yeah. Oh, okay. Under very certain circumstances. Yeah, the national, the national statistic of that was pointed out there. Uh, so this, this is something I just received yesterday that I just sent to you today. So you have even a chance to read it. Okay, so everybody has this, so I would just recommend that everybody read it. Yeah. yeah. Got, uh, in preparation for the review, which is a lengthy document that Lorraine's highlighted for us the different state and federal. Yeah. yeah. So take a look. One of the challenges that we have that I did talk briefly with Mike about a couple of weeks ago was, say I have a veteran who passed away that is unmarried and has no dependents. Okay, in the cemetery we have two plots by the headstone, so one parent would be buried there, but there's no space for two parents. So those are the things we need to think through, think through, talk through, and I I don't have the expertise to do that. I need well, DPW yeah. to. Really yeah, up. and then also, um, as everyone knows, our veteran agent position is vacant, but Jim has some candidates uh, that he's finalizing that he will present to you or give the opportunity. Do we know um, your candidates what kind of experience they have? Uh, one has experience, the other is a newer, just retired veteran. Okay. So just looking for some insight from that individual as well. Honestly, I think you can get the insight from that individual. Our past veteran was like, no, because it's a, I don't know, there's a whole can of worms. Yeah. However, in investigating this, they do allow it in state and federal right. cemeteries. I think it's going to have to be a board decision based on the information we get from what our cemetery can accommodate. I don't disagree with that. I'm just suggesting that, you know, that if we're going to hire somebody that has some experience, then we can take some insight from them as well. If that's the road that everyone goes down, there, that's good. Okay. Yeah, no, thank you for that. So that's it for that topic okay. for tonight. And the next topic is I wanted to have a discussion with you and to take a look at the spreadsheet of the policies that we have left. All right, so we'll back up to the top. Um, so the policies that remain, there's a couple that we need to address at our next meeting. For example, uh, Hawker Panther license as well. So there's a few I, I need to work through with our own department. Um, we're not going to get to request replacement of memorials on town property in a meter or during my the rest of my employment meeting. So um, there's some suggestions that I have, I've talked to Jim about, that we have, uh, and I wanted to discuss with you, and that is, and I, Karen and I talked about it as well in our meetings, Karen came over and I, and we need the board to make a decision regarding departmental policies being maintained by the select board, the select board policy. Really, they're departmental policies that should be managed and maintained by the department. I'll give you some examples. Okay. Did we talk about this? We no. You, you, you previewed, yeah. Oh, sort of did. No, we did the last time. Okay, but I wanted to give you specific examples. Okay. So we need to discuss and decide regarding departmental policies being maintained and posted by each department after the board votes them and they're approved by the select board. Similar things that we do with many departments. We just don't do it with all the departments. For example, water bill fees, sewer connection fees, irrigation policy, street lights, water use restrictions, water ban policies. And then we get to the financial policies like ambulance billing and collection policy, financial policies that we haven't even really voted yet, prohibitions on reimbursements that we just recently voted. Um, and maybe, maybe Nancy can weigh on what she thinks about the finance policies, but the DPW policies, we already have these sewer rules and regulations that all of these policies and all of these changes that you vote get put in. We need to do the same thing for the water division or street lots under DPW. 
They need to really maintain their own policies and practices, post them on their website so people are aware of them. If I'm going to be looking for a, you know, street life policy, I'm not going to be looking under the select board. I'm going to be looking under DPW. I agree with that. Um, so my suggestion is we take these existing policies that we have, and rather than have, you know, you did recently do a change to the water bill maintenance. Correct. Okay. So we'll update that as the new policy. But I think we take these other policies instead of going through them one by one as, as a select board, we give them to the departments to say, these are going to become your departmental policies. If you require any revisions, you present them to the select board for discussion, review, and vote. Suggestion. Sorry. So I don't need to needlessly complicate this, but this board is the water commissioners. You're the everything and, board, not just the water commissioners. Well, you just let me finish. We're the water commissioners, which is not always the case in many other towns. We're the sewer commissioners, where it's not a policy. So whenever the water department changes its policies, doesn't it come to this board to right? every department comes to this board, including water? Yes. Well, I don't I, well, I don't recall having the street like people come in to Alabama. Yes, because they all changed. But he did a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. And but so, I also, I think, can I, uh, yeah. I just want to, if the board should vote to move this back and have it under their purview, Jim, can we hold them accountable for getting them up and on their the website? Like, are they on the website today? Are there any that are missing? Like, we want to make sure that we don't just delegate this and it gets packed. Yeah, and it just sits in. Every department's, you know, filing cabinet. We need to make sure it gets up on. Yeah, I mean, you just did this for. I just want you just did this for uh, inspections for Bob Bowman from building department, mm -hmm. and he posted it on his website. He updated permit office. He did everything he needed to do. Go ahead and answer. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, Marge. I well, <laughs> go ahead. Sure. I disagree with Lorraine on this one. I think decentralization is a really bad idea when it comes to policies. So I think there should be a one-stop place for finding policies because I think it empowers departments to think they can change policy that's yeah. not within their purview to change. Or they don't. There isn't a, an updated compendium of where they sit. As for what Bob Vogel just changed, he changed the rates. That wasn't policy. They updated the rates on their on their on their web page. So, I'm, but the, they would still have to come here for any changes. So, if like, they know so, it. well, to your point, do I don't want to overcomplicate things either? But does there need to be a policy written about the process? Do we yes. already have that, or that we need to add it? Well, that's what I was suggesting. That we're right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sure. And I think that would. I think that would be. Could in our policy say, should the board make a departmental policy change? Direct or should the board direct the depart, a, a department to do something? Well, the, the change would probably come on behalf of the department. Yeah, they want to bring it to us. We agree. Right. So should we, you know, whatever the word is, you know, we we we, we say we're going to do this. Okay, we're going to change the policy. We're going to set the interiors in the water. I would get that. Now it becomes a departmental policy. That and then we, in that in our policy we should say it must be posted in a public place. You must, you know, all of those things. We can direct them through as a board policy, um, so that the access and transparency is there. But yeah, there. I mean, you can say, I mean, the. We're not sitting around thinking too much about all these different departmental things. It's, all, it's almost always they come to us and say, hey, this isn't working, or X. Or Nancy says, we're out of money, and then they figure out the thing. Plus, they need to be aware of their own departmental policies. Yeah. It's, and I mean, pointed that thing out at the last meeting that exactly, if I have something I want to know about my water bill or something, I'm going to call the water department. Yeah. It's too good to just. I, I mean, I hear what I hear what Nancy's saying, but the mooring rules and regulations, they have to come. Right. 
Oh, Every it's centralized morning. anyway. It is. Andrew? I'm just using it. I don't need to be you might be making a policy for policy. Can <laughs> <laughs> we call it the current world? I don't want to go with it's yeah. for jail. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, it's, I think both sides are right. I mean, the fact that you can have a master policy book, if you can decentralize, you have one central location for everything, but having them um, living amongst where people actually want to see them, I think also makes sense. I think they'll be able to cross this river. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, because I'm just one more example is we just voted, we voted previously to have the HR policies all go to the HR director to come up with a policy for employees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. All right, so we'll write a policy to. I'll see for the policy. We don't have any more. Forever, no, the current rule. The current rule, please. <laughs> I mean, you know, the worst thing that could happen is. You don't like it, it's not working, and you make it select board policies again. But then it goes another 20 years with nobody looking at them. You know what? No. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. If, if someone's going to issue the water department and they go to the water department, they go on the online, and they see it says water department policies, they look up water department policies, and if they're going to issue the water department policy, they can certainly come and talk to us. Of course. Right. Right. Well, that's yeah. I, mean, I think yeah. the easier we make it for people to find the information. Yes, correct. Because then having a, I'm sorry, I don't think we need a 125 feet select board policy book. No, when that's what she's recommending. Yes. So, and as for financial policies, our policy would be we don't start to discuss them at 10 o'clock at night, which is what we did. I don't think they do have. I'm just saying, I think need to first want to make sure it comes to set up to front of me. That's the first. Can't wait. All right, all right. Okay, so all I need is a vote on the first two select board meeting packet guidelines and walk in public speed guidelines. Um, 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 we also, I believe, need to ratify, if the board so desired, ratify the procedural, that the big one, the procedure, select board procedural policies and rescind all of the ones that got. Lumped into that one. We did that at the last meeting. We did it at the last meeting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we, did. Yeah, we, did. Yeah, we did it real fast. We did yeah. it. We went through everything. Just yeah. Fun and fun. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. ball's in my court to organize it all into one box. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I just didn't. Yep. I just haven't had time. I just want to talk about it. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> we need a motion to just for the first two. Right. So to um, we need a motion to accept. The sorry, I'm getting down. Select board meeting packet guidelines and the walk in public speak guidelines with the changes that you made changes tonight. tonight. Mm -hmm. So, so, so moved by Karen Canfield, second by Jackson. Susan Harrison. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And we'll come back to the next two of them if you want to see them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Um, hi. hi. Yeah, the night at Columbus here. Thank you. <laughs> Next on the agenda. Okay, the people. So that's great. Great. And Karen, again, thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you for folks so being featured with us as we go through that. But we can just do it at public meeting. So, Mr. Moore. Good evening, Mr. Moore. Welcome Moore. to talk about our annual Night at Columbus Carnival event. Thank you for having you us. Both. Good. Just name and addresses for everybody yep. for the record that we heard. Michael James, 14 Walnut Ave. Michael. Carl Moore, 8 Salt Meadow Lane. I'm uh, Becky Grand Knight from the Knights of Columbus, and Michael and I are co chairs of this year's carnival, which we have put for the select board. will be this year, um, Tuesday, the 9th of July through Saturday, the 13th of July. Uh, we're hoping for good weather. That's early. It is it's earlier early. this year. That's originally the week we've always had it after oh, really? July. Oh, really? like July 26th. Yeah, we, and we had post that. Work? Right? And that was, that was the vision. The 22nd? 13th. The 13th. I was so upset. Oh, it's on you. Right. <laughs> and so we did move it to, to coincide with the uh, Friday. Thank you. Um, yeah. 
Just so you know, the challenge has always been that we are fighting the tides. Yes, yes. With farming. So, as Andrew just said, it's low tide. It's low tide that week. So, you know, sometimes the select board wants to address the uh, water gates and flood gates on the parkway. We'd be happy to well, talk we to are. the knights about it. Well, has made great progress there. We're waiting for the sortie out to be coming to design and engineering for the whole parkway. Oh, yeah. Yes. No, oh, great, 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 great progress. So, that problem. No problem. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so this year's uh, event is planned uh, with the normal festivities. Uh, one addition, we have listened to the town and a lot of feedback we get from our, uh, our guests every year. And uh, we are trying something new this year with a Saturday matinee at 3 to 7 p.m. It was brought to our attention that there wasn't enough time and hours for the little folks to get out and enjoy the show. So we're going to try a, an additional four hours on Saturday afternoon. So what does that can you just explain that I don't understand? So normally every night our event is from 7 to 11. Oh. Every night. So on Saturday we're right. having a matinee from 3 to 7. Okay, just so the, the carnival will be open for additional time. Right? That's right. Got it. Sorry, it's so thick. It's okay. Yeah. That's a great idea. Other than um, that, it's business has, has the uh, do the police can the police um, approve that extension? Three seven. We need to do anything additional. Yes, yeah, so we're still waiting for the final feedback from the police department from three to seven. Okay. For the whole package. Okay. Including the three to seven, but so yeah. far they have no problems with it. Jen's spoken to Taylor Billings, and they will be meeting with the Knights of Columbus. Yeah. Okay, so we can make a motion pending any, you know, final. Yeah, it was approved for the original week, and then we had to move it back to yes, the show down here in conflict. So it was approved for the first week by all departments in town, and I'm uh, happy to change this week, which just caused the delay. Okay. Uh, questions? No. Oh, yeah, if you're going to talk to the police, I just remind her don't block the ramp to the water. I think last year there were a bunch of trucks parked on the ramp to the block. Oh, the one over by yeah, uh, the ducks. Yeah, yeah, right right yeah. yeah, there was a, an, early in the evening there was a dumpster there. Yeah, we had a dumpster there. Yeah. yeah, so we, we I think, got a phone call and got it removed. Yeah, before. Right. don't do that. No. Nope. As long as you don't do that, I don't want to. <laughs> People need to get Carl will make sure that's we'll make sure it's done. Done at the dumpster. No, I'll I love talking to the local local businesses on Front Street and how it's impact. This is one of the key events. Uh, they really see a good uptick in business. If they don't complain about the <laughs> right, but they love it. They see all it's much more direct way to play. <laughs> uh, really, yeah, that is bringing folks in. And so, so thank you for that. And all those, those folks, you know, is um, really, it's really great. You know, they try it. Yeah. And I, I think it's really, really oh, yeah. I think what other chairs have done in the past during this time is we, they have shared. Some of the donations that go back into our yeah. town. So and I think that would be great to hear. That was asked last year, so we're proud. Yeah. This is our 66th year as a carnival. And okay. over the last 10 years, we have uh, donated back to the scholarship fund close to $300,000. Wow. And uh, so we anticipate the support of the town and everyone to do that. And that is just the scholarship fund. We do other goodwill throughout the town, people in need in the town, and causes in need, charity events in need as well. But the focus. Uh, for the carnival, for the grand raffle, and our golf tournament is really for the, uh, the scholarships. Uh, any additional questions? Any concerns, Jim? Let's help it. No. All right. Um, we don't have, I don't think we have a motion in front of us. So, uh, yes, yes, we do. Oh, you guys have one? Yeah. yeah. All right. Can we make it? Can we get a yeah. special event permit to situate Legs of Columbus for the annual carnival? We held July 9th through the 13th. Set up will begin at midnight on July 8th. Second. Motion by Karen Connolly, second by Andrew Goodrich. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. So, next, we discuss and appoint, appoint poll workers. Annual. See how many do you have? You have a lot? 
Um, I think we can make a motion based on a list that is provided in our backup, or do we have to read everyone? No, I think a motion is listed. Okay. Thank you to all those who stepped forward. Um, it's not an easy job. I see some new names on here, so it's very nice to see folks that continue to uh, come forward and help with our our elections. So thank you. So motion. Move to appoint uh, the election workers uh, as listed uh, from the town clerk supplement list. Second. Motion by Andrew Goodrich, second by Karen Canfield. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and then we also have to discuss our offer Pedler license renewal, renewal for Nonas and made ice cream. Yes. Does anybody want to make a motion? Move to move that the select board votes to renew the offer Pedler license for Nonas and made ice cream for the 2024 season pending the required documents. Uh, I have a point of order or question. Uh, what's the season for her? Is it for them, sorry. It's the regular seasonal, uh, it's April. April to October. First to January 15th. Okay, so it's not annual like everyone else. No, ice cream, no. Okay, just wanted that. Right. Yeah. Oh, motion by Karen Canfield. Second. Second by Susan Harrison. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Liaison reports. Uh, I gave mine at the beginning. So I'll just start. Andrew. ability is just, just no. Uh, biggest thing about it, I guess, is looking to the bathrooms in high school. Just basically the ones by the uh, what we vote by the gymnasium. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and so that we'll be investigating that. Make sure that's excellent accessibility to make sure. Uh, so the, there's some additional things. Data compliant, there's some ways to make it. Easier um, access on access. So, just want to tell you, investigating that, I'm going to post a little bit easier. Especially since it's also our. And there were no school yeah. 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 school committee yeah. on that. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Susan? Um, well, Mordecai, I like what's going on there. Um, we have a meeting tomorrow, but um, we'll be cleaning up this weekend. And oh, we actually, so we had chip tape day this weekend. Thank so um, there was a lot of activity all through the town um, and coordinated efforts to uh, on beaches and whatnot. And um, we had a team out at the Mordecai Lincoln property and created two gigantic piles of trash. So I um, pulled a lot of trash out from from the wooded area back there. And then Sunday, um, we had a crew out there um, making the trail. So we, uh, we've got to start moving the trail. Forward. Yes, yeah. they are moving forward. Okay. So um, it's a beautiful spot. That's, they did a great job with the trail system. So, yeah, so a lot's going on with that. I'm just, did we do the report of the town administrator? No, we no. didn't. No, we're not doing it. <laughs> I just realized we didn't do that. I have my feelings. I'm not going to do it. No, no, we're doing it because oh. I, I want. No, we're doing it. Oh, come on, come on. Just come on. We didn't do that. Sorry, so I was not going to approve my couple in my last meeting. I'm sorry, Chair. Um, anything else? <laughs> so I was like, you need to say thank you. I should shake you. No, and then the only other um, north south river, they're doing PMS doing a lot more testing. There, um, in hopes of opening up additional recreational shellfish areas in the South River that are very accessible. So, um, they were out there today on a beautiful day testing. So, we've been testing quite a bit with the shellfish. So, that's good news. We're hoping to open additional areas, um, with the later soon. Okay, so that would be good. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, um, we did have a meeting of the Gold Parkway Redevelopment Committee and um, had a very lively discussion among the members of the committee. The engineering firm presented us with the results of their findings in terms of they did a lot of site work looking around for, you know, where everything is, where everything's buried, what's the, the soil status, etc. And they did come back with some suggestion, but um, 
there's a little bit of disagreement on committee itself as to the exact scope of the project. So we need to go back in our next meeting and revisit it so that the entire committee is on this thing. So you meaning the meaning the select board or meaning your committee? The my party. Yes. Well, yes. you know, I do. <laughs> Okay, as a unit to put the responsibility for the fact that there seems to be a disagreement. Uh, you know, yeah. about the charge, it. right? Well, that's it. it's not even, it's not the charge, it's actually the scope of work that we gave to the engineering uh, and not everyone agreed, but a little work in the and it we'll have to send them all back the, the scope of work so that we're clear on what we're about. <coughs> Once you start to talk about Cole Parkway, then you're talking about Brook Street, then you're talking about Front Street, then you're talking about yeah. uh, it, 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 no more. No more. It all starts to, it's like a flood if you don't understand. Uh, well, it's, it's one of those situations, you know, anytime you do full stream resiliency, you always have to uh, keep in mind the impact to adjacent areas. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Right? Yes. Oh, so, yes. Yes. Absolutely. So all I'll say is, the engineering report was very interesting, very professional, very well done. The, uh, the engineers themselves are extremely young, um, but they did a great job. We just as a committee need to regroup and make sure that everyone has read the scope of what we asked the engineering firm to do. So we're all clear on it. And all that's posted on online, or is all that posted on? I don't know if the engineering report is online yet. I just don't know. Is that something that would be online, or is that something people would have to come to town hall to look at? Well, it will, it will be online. I just don't physically know it's there okay. today. We only, talk, we only saw it last week, so I don't know if it's something okay. that would be Yeah, yeah. Jim, can we get copies for everybody? Yep. Okay. Anything else? No, that was enough. <laughs> Karen? Uh, just to let you know that the uh, bicycle committee slow ball was rescheduled for May 19th. Uh, registration around 11 a.m. We're going to have the recreation department is postponed for weather. Um, they expect about up to about 100 people to participate in that. Okay. Sign up now if you haven't. Um, and I did want to mention it's not really a reason, but the Citro Committee is celebrating its 30th of the year. Oh, oh and they're cool. doing activities and fundraising in support of that milestone. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, I know. Pretty cool. I just want to hear it now. Wow. Um, I do want to say thank you to the Beautification Commission for the annual Ship Shake Day and cleanup. I apologize for we'll do that at the beginning of the meeting. Um, they worked so hard to bring everything together. And thank you to all the volunteers throughout the town that cleaned our town this past weekend. Um, don't we should have missed it, but we missed it. Um, so Hopefully the best end up picked up by other people. Um, but thank you to everybody. It's a great community uh, initiative. And now we'll go to the report of the town administrator that I forgot. I'm going to make you do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll go very quickly uh, given the, uh, the hour. Uh, uh, let's just remind people the election is Saturday, May 18th, 6 to 8 p.m. Sitch with High School. Uh, ballots will be mailed to voters who check all elections on their vote by mail form for 2024 elections. Those ballots have been sent out. Ballots must be returned before 6 p.m. on May 18th to the town clerk's office or the drop box. We're not bring them to the polls. Uh, the clerk's office will not be open, but they will check the drop box out front right at 6. If they're not here by 6 o'clock, they will not be counted. Uh, we talked about tides a little bit. We do have some astronomical high tides through Friday morning, We're mostly the night tides. Which will be overnight, so that's pretty good, but we do expect some minor flooding and splash holes, so be careful going through those areas. Uh, we want to remind people that with Memorial Day fast approaching, you need your beach checkers. Uh, we're waiting for the new sign. We have the signs, the Beach Commission was approving them. Uh, I feel which carries stuff too. Uh, but we'll get those up prior to that. But uh, reminding people that non resident stickers are not valid on the weekend. Thank you. All right, let's get that over. Uh, flushing, the water pump is flushing on Country Way through First Parish and all down the side streets this week, so please be aware of that. Check your water before doing any wash or doing any cooking if you have to rinse it out. Uh, if you have any questions, you can call the water department, 545-8735. Also, uh, water restrictions are now in effect. They will in effect May 1st. 
All outdoor watering must occur before 9 a.m. and after 5 p.m. So May 1st and September 30th, automatic irrigation systems may be used one day per week as designated by the Water Department according to your precinct. You can go to the Water Department webpage for your details. Uh, we just want to remind people this is not our water restriction. This is proposed by the state based upon our water basin. It has nothing to do with how much water we've got, how much rain we've got, how much water in the reservoir. It's just a uh, ban that's put on by the state this time year to help conserve water. The library wants to remind you that library Sunday hours are now done for the season. They will not start up again now until September 29th, 2024. New library hours are posted on the website, but no Sunday hours for the summer at the library. Friends of the Sitchwood Town Library are presenting their third annual library art auction. Starting Friday, May 10th, you can do the artwork online or in person at the Sitchwood Town Library. 22 talented local artists from Sitchwood have generously donated their artwork for this event. Bidding is available online starting on Friday, May 10th, 2024. Bids run from May 10th to May 24th. The website is available on our posted uh, update. All proceeds to the United can go to the free family friendly outdoor summer concert series. It's occurred at the library every Wednesday evening in July, beginning July 10th, 2024. If you've been out to the live for the lighthouse, the contract is finally back on site. Uh, I've talked to our OPM today. The grouting has begun. They're expected to finish that at the end of this week, beginning next week. Once that is all done, then the general contract will come back out. They are still on schedule. They have everything removed, the lighthouse painted and done by Memorial Day. Uh, weather dependent, hopefully, they'll be able to get some work done with the rain over the next couple of days. And the Historic Society is tentatively set August 7th, National Lighthouse Day, as a date to celebrate the renovation of the Sixth of Light. We'll get more details as we get closer. Sixth Fire Department and Sixth CERT Team, supported by the Sixth Rotary Club hosting monthly free stop the bleed class hands-only CPR sessions starting on Thursday, May 30th, 2024 at the Public Safety Complex from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Seating is limited. Only the first 20 people who reserve a seat will be accommodated. You can email Lieutenant Dave Bordelato at dbordelato at situmma.gov to reserve your spot. Great class. Really learn a lot. So if you have an interest in that, please get online and sign up for that. Plymouth County Mosquito Control Project is at truck-based Delta side application. Got that out. From June 3rd to October 2024, between 2 a.m. and sunrise, and Monday through Friday, Plymouth County residents can request spraying for their area via phone, fax, drop off, or mail. You visit the Board of Health webpage on the city website, click on news and announcements. For more information, streets. Street spraying schedules will be updated on the project's website by 3 p.m. the day before. An email notification will be sent if provided during the request. The program aims to control nuisance and virus carrying adult mosquitoes, utilize and control materials, materials such as do it, ULV, Zenevex, ERRTU, and suspend SC. Homeowners can include their property for public area wide pesticide applications. For information on that, go to the Board of Health website. And finally, once again, the food pantry I was grateful for the donations. The most needed items right now, canned white tuna, canned mixed vegetables, cranberry juice, baked beans, yellow cake mix, canned fruit mix, granola bars, jello pudding cups, quick bread mix, and ripe pilaf. We dropped off the food pantry, Shaw's, Village Market, all the library. Thank you. All right. <laughs> you can tell how upset I was at this game. Thought he was going to get. I know. I apologize. <laughs> I have a question about the mosquitoes. If somebody uh, requested, do the are the abutters notified that it's happening at all? Like if one resident requested, like how does that work? I would have to go check on the website. Okay. Think, yeah. no. 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 Because you would think they would. Um, okay. Then we would never get them. I know. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. Any questions for Jim? No. Okay, oh, Jim. Sorry again. Okay. All right, we have a lot of correspondence. Clerk. Um, yes. Um, we had two letters um, regarding the um, two, 210, 214, and 218 first crash road. So the development of those 40 bay there. Um, they were um, both of others. One is from 209 first parish, and one was 202 first parish citing um, that it's a state designated wetland, there's no sewer there, parking, problematic um, 
issues with parking, wetlands, stormwater, wastewater, um, and site survey. So there's a lot of activity, a lot of, we've received a lot of correspondence about that, that location, which is, which we, very concerning. It is very concerning because it does seem to be unbuildable. So I don't understand how we have it as not buildable in our, um, on our town records. But the site, um, the actual um, plans are at Town Hall if people want to come out with them. And again, that's just to the um, Massachusetts for site approval. It's not at the, at the state. It hasn't been approved by the state to come to the ZBA yet. Um, so there's Have we still... provided our comments to the state yet? No, they're not through yet. I've gotten explicitly comments from all the departments. I actually got to an extension for us to respond. Okay. So the response date is now the 29th of the work. This week, the next week, we'll do that. Do we um, add in um, a butter on this as well? Or yeah, we talked to the uh, Mike Busby, who's the um, mass housing rep. He said we wanted to send those along, we could. Okay. Uh, but he also did caution, he talked to some of the residents that day, he cautioned that eligibility is a teeny tiny bar to get over. So, uh, 29 years of long state eligibility denied once, and then the Applicant went back and basically said everything the town said was wrong. They said, okay, you can have eligibility. So if the rubber really is going to hit the road when it gets to the ZBA, if it gets there, but we will make very strong comments. We agree with the residents pretty much right down the line that yeah. this is not, it's not, not a good spot. It's not, right. okay. it probably is not the way that they're represented. Right. So yeah. I noticed the difference on the plan did not look like what the plan looks like as far as where this is going. Can we request any assistance from Senator O'Connor and Representative Kearney on this? Ken is not. Doesn't help. Um, uh, we also received um, correspondence from Ancient Order Hiberians thanking folks for attending the Easter Rising commemoration on April 21st, 2024. <clears throat> Let's see, we also received correspondence from James Landing, mm -hmm. um, on, or 93 residents on behalf of James Landing, so the condo association, again, requesting that we consider a proposal to modify the water sewer policy for condo buildings that do not have um, multiple water meters. And just to give you guys an update, you know, Nancy did meet with the software company last week, so they are moving forward and looking at a solution that will come before you as a board uh, to evaluate that. Okay, great. Next step. And I did respond, I, I copied Andrew, I did respond to the James Landing okay. folks to let them know that that was in the works and that somebody would be in touch. Great. And then we have a magazine of lighthouses, November, December, 2020. We have a that was sent to us regarding Situate's rebuild, an sorry. article, but this seems like it's older. I don't know. It's December 2023, so we just received it. Who sent it to us? It was a magazine that was sent to us. The name's open. And okay. we just scanned it. And we just got it. We just scanned it. Article to you. It's a nice article yeah. on the restoration yeah. of the lighthouse. It's Santa to the Yeah, maybe <laughs> Santa is a little late. Um, and then we also have uh, Corey Miles, our coastal management officer, um, sent us the annual CRS um, community rating system progress report, um, which is a voluntary program, um, incentive program that recognizes community club plan management practices that exceed minimum requirements. Um, so this is important because situate homeowners who purchase flood insurance through, um, can receive 15% discount if they purchase it through NFIP um, on their premium. So the, we fail our coastal management officer fills out this plan and um, that uh, I believe it's also available online. So she gets a detailed um, hazard mitigation plan for the town. Thank you, Corey. Yes, thank you, Corey. It is, it's a lot of work and a lot of pages. Yeah. Um, and then we also have 
U.S. News and World Report rankings of Massachusetts high schools, how well the staff were fared, and we are number 57, Sidra High School. So we received that as well. In the state? In the state of Massachusetts, yes. Yeah, well Marshfield, right. one right. Yeah, yay, Sidra. Um, it's yeah. out of 350 districts, no. right? Yes. Yeah, 400 and some schools. Four hundred and five high schools. Yeah, okay. four, sorry, four hundred and five. Four hundred and five Massachusetts high schools. Yes. So that's all I have. Congratulations to them. Yes. Um, any anything else? Right. Um, we have a motion to accept the minutes of the select board meeting that was held on April twenty third and April 29th. Uh -huh. Moved by Karen Canfield. Second by Andrew Goodrich. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I think that's it. I will make a motion um, to adjourn and sign documents. So uh, second. Second by Karen Canfield. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.